అందరికి సంతోషంగా ఉందా ఆర్ యు ఆల్ హ్యాపీ బి ఆల్వేస్ హ్యాపీ 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 Separation is a lie Maya is a cause of this immense confusion So watch her walk on by Maya, step aside Come on, sing it with us Maya, step aside Attachment and desire are the trap of this illusion It's time to fight for truth and love Stop clinging to this momentary sense delusion Turn your desires to love Maya, step aside I want to hear it Maya, step aside Lifetime after lifetime and from body to body Maya keeps playing her game This constant up and down of emotion and ego Mostly ends up in pain Maya step aside louder come on Maya step aside We are one heart one love one all Forever one heart one love one all We are one heart one love one all step aside my step aside living in the moment being in the present it's our practice all the time everything's connected the rest is an illusion this life of yours and mine my step aside i want to hear it my step aside to love all and to serve all we'll conquer this illusion let's do what must be done Time to take a stand against this mind delusion The fight has just begun Maya, step aside Maya, step aside We are the creator, that's a true conclusion See God and love in all Practice this and it will solve your deep confusion Open up your heart and call Maya step aside Maya step aside We are one heart one love one all Forever one heart one love one all We are one heart one love one all My step aside My step aside Come on sing it My step aside Yes Swami My step aside Move her for us My step aside My step aside My step aside Please Swami My step aside Come on Mother Maya please My step aside <laughs> That's why we have to practice. How many of us have practiced since the last time we shared? Did we practice anything? Something. Something? We know you. Okay. <laughs> Even just sharing love and light wherever you will go or whatever you're doing. Sairam, please sit. Come. Be comfortable. Very frankly, so many of us guys. You know, in the early days, usually after we give a concert for about 45, 50 minutes, 
at the end of a concert, once in a while, Swami asks, any new song? That means, make one up on the spur of the moment, right here, right now. He leaned up. Any new, new song? It's like what? Are you tired of the tired old ones? Tired of the old ones? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. we got very quiet. And I'll tell you how, the, how it happened the, first, the very first time. We were watching the sunrise <laughs> coming up, and it was a beautiful orange ball. It just looks like Swami's, Swami's robe. orange robe. You know, just the same. So as we're watching the sunrise, ah, Swami, you're coming up. And then, after the concert, we were looking at Swami after he asked any new song. We were looking out the window. The window was right next to him. Right beside him. And there the sun was setting. The a same bright orange. orange ball one more time. So we got very empty and quiet inside. And then the song started to flow. Here is the song. It wears the same bright orange dress Sai Baba wears today It's the color of such a sign The color of love He is love, He is love He is everything, everywhere We are love And that is what creation's made up of such a sai, you and I. Such a sai, Baba Lady. Sing it with us. Such a sai, you and I. Such a sai, Baba Ji. Such a sai, you and I. Such a sai, Baba Ji. Such a sai, you and I. Such a sai, Baba Ji. We are love. Same bright orange dress. I feel the touch of such a sign. His love is tenderness. As he enters the temple of our love and heart, we are love, we are love, we are everything, everywhere. We are love, and that is. What creation's made up of Such a sai, you and I Such a sai, Baba G Such a sai, you and I Such a sai, Baba G We are love, we are true We are everything how the song went. And when we got stuck for words, he leaned over and filled, filled in. in. <laughs> so who wrote, who wrote the song? It? You know? Swami. Shanti. 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 For some of you who may not know that Shanti, these body's daughter, <laughs> which Swami gave back to us when she was 13 and a half years old, she was dead. Wait, pretty much, almost. Sort of brought her back. Sort of brought her back. Gave her a choice. <sighs> Sucker. <laughs> All her karma was finished. You know? said, All your karma is finished. You can come with me and you'll be finished. Done. Or you can go, go back, back and help, help me, me mom, mom and dad. And dad. And she Just, looked up and said, oh, mm, I'll go back and help, help you, mom, mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> so here she is. And she woke up. So back in, uh, was it two? Uh, <laughs> was it two thousand and three or four? When? when you did the darshan song, and it was a hit of Puda party at the time. Uh, I think I wrote it in O one. In O one. Okay. That's the last time I did. Okay, two thousand and one. Okay, so 
Then we were in with Swami at the time and we said, Swami, have you heard the new song? Darshan song? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Shanti is going to sing it for us. Please? Enough? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think Patty has to go pretty soon, so he came only to hear your song. Oh. <laughs> No, he has to stay. He doesn't go out enough. Yeah. Everybody's got to go say hi to him, invite him to parties. Yeah. And song. He's been sort of a shut in. <laughs> He's playing hermit too much. Okay? <laughs> no. Okay, so I guess we've all been to Darshan before. <laughs> and this lived on the ashram for a certain time. This is when Swami was coming out at... You know, at 6 in the morning. 6 in the morning. 7. Okay. Yeah. So we were getting up at 4 in the morning <laughs> and going to wait in the lines and then, you know, hours and hours. And everybody better start... It's 3 a.m. Take a cold shower and let the day begin. Now when I'm, uh, oh wait. Okay. Start again. <laughs> Hear the clock, it's 3 a.m. Take a cold shower and let the day begin. Sneak a cup of coffee, don't believe it's a sin. Cause waking up before the sun has never been my thing. Roll out the door at a quarter past four Trek to the lines to see which row I score My back's a little achy and my butt's a little sore Before the one I adore I'll sit here some more For a darshan We wake up before the sun For a darshan We get patted down for guns For a darshan We get shoved by everyone Satya Sai How can I deny such fun Deny such fun Take a seat in row 19 Someone tries to sit on me Now I know what it's like to be a sardine Swami, hurry up before I scream Two hours wait and the sweat starts to pour I don't know if I can take any more But with your bright orange robe And that afro galore He steps into view and floats Through the door For Darshan We wake up before the sun For Darshan We get patted down for guns For Darshan We get shoved by everyone Step you side How can I deny such fun? Strikes without delay as those piercing eyes glance my way. All the discomfort seems to fade away when he walks right up and asks about my day. His warm smile turns to a frown. I'm sorry, Swami, have I let you down? The ashram life has worn me out, and I I don't know if I can hang around for Darshan. For Darshan, we get added down for guns. For Darshan, we get shoved by everyone. Step you side, how can I deny such fun? Deny such fun. He starts to laugh and begins to say, You are me and life's a game. It's all illusion. Just like that, he went on his way. But now I know the divine truth. There's no reason to have the ashram blues, because you are me and I'm 
menu. Maybe I'll go to the canteen and serve some food. For Darshan, we wake up before the sun. For Darshan, we get patted down for cuts. For Darshan, we get shoved by everyone. Such a sigh, how can I deny such fun? Song. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I want to go more, more. <laughs> oh, we'll sing a little bit more today. But just to again touch upon the truth one more time, and we've talked about it many times before. All of you know this already. But the question is, have we practiced anything to get back to the? understanding of the real truth, the oneness that everything Swami's is. Swami's final message, you are God, you are Swami. Right? Right? So if everything <laughs> is God, and everything is only that one that is playing the game of being the many, why do we have a problem? Swami said life is a dream. Realize it. Are we realizing that it's a dream? Only if we silence the mind. If we don't silence the mind, we will never realize it because we'll always be caught by Maya in, out, through everything. That's what the construction road signs say. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> and he said, life is a game. Play it. Do we understand what that means? He says, life is a game. Now, when we think of the word game, what does it say to us? Oh, it's frivolous, it's nothing, it's Monopoly? just... Monopoly? Yeah. Clue? Clue. Uh, <laughs> But what is he really saying when he said it's a game? Well, if everything is the oneness, and if the divine self is playing all the different parts, then it is a game of loving itself. It's a game of recognizing itself in all, and then interacting with that self, whatever the part may be. And what does it mean to interact with something? It means that you connect. And everything, if you look at this creation clearly, you see that everything in this creation is forever trying to connect and merge again. No matter how it appears to us. We look at the world situation and we look at all the murdering and thieving and all the things that go on in the world. The genocides, uh, the famine, everything. And we say, how can that be love? Swami said, God is love. And everything is God. So that means everything is love. How can everything be love that appears that way to us? How? Well, if we go back to the truth and the understanding of the oneness, we understand that everything is energy. Energy that moves and expands. This energy is the Divine Mother, the Om Sam, the Parabindu, all the different names for it. But it is truly, Swami explained to us, it's consciousness in motion. That means as long as it is in motion, it creates, just like our mind. And until we discipline our mind, we constantly create everything that we experience. Everything is self-created. No one, no one has created it for you except yourself. You got no one to blame. No one to blame. No God to blame. You can blame the monkey mind. Yes. <laughs> That's one thing to blame, but then if you don't like it, then discipline it. Put it in its place. And Swami makes it really clear. He makes it so simple and so easy. If your mind goes into the future, pull it back. It's your tool. No longer master. If it goes into the past, bring it back. Be here in the moment, in the present. And you notice... When we're here, right now, unless your mind's thinking, did I leave some? Did I leave the light on in the house? Did I leave the fan on? You just miss the moment. 
But if you're here right now, there's no thought. What does it mean to hear the words empty mind? When you think about that particular phrase, an empty <coughs> mind, you think, oh, you cannot exist without an empty mind. And Swami said, not at all. You can exist beautifully without having a thought. Because in this moment, if you're truly here, you're experiencing things are happening There's all around so us. There's so much going on. So in order to use the mind in a, with a thought, you have to think about an object or an idea. For example, okay, uh, here's Samantha. If I look at Samantha and if I have a thought, oh, that's a pretty scarf. Now I was thinking. If I just perceive the pretty scarf and I don't have a thought, there is no mind involved. There's only the experience of it. And if it was me, I'd say, that's such a pretty scarf. <laughs> <laughs> Which, that's the emotional part. So, how do we control the mind? Because finally it comes down to that for each and every one of us. At, at the end of the road, at the end of all meditation, at the end of sitting there for hours and falling asleep once in a while and <laughs> doing japa or whatever we do. After a while, we have to come to one conclusion. That if we don't discipline the mind, we will never know God, the Self or Swami. Swami said, until you know the Self, you will never know me. So silence the mind and know yourself. He showed us the thumb exercise, which we showed you guys last time. Any of you guys try it? Yes. How did it work? Very well. Okay. Did you find yourself separating? No. It was just silent. Empty. Oh, okay. beautiful. You've been practicing a long time. Good. <laughs> it's, a, it's an exercise. It, works. Yeah. it does. It does. It's an exercise he shared first time, I believe, was in 68, 69, when we heard about it. And then the second time was in 86 or 7 sometimes. And the last time was a... You know, Just when we recently, had the youth conference. Youth conference of the world. He mm. showed it to the youth. He, he, he showed it to the youth. Now, if they practice it or not, that's their. Mm. Who doesn't know what we're talking about? Shall we repeat it, DMI? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, for hundreds of thousands of lifetimes, we've been fused. This is our body self, our ego, ego mind, mind emotion, senses. We believe that this is who we are. Your Atma Self has been fused for hundreds of thousands of lifetimes believing this is who we are. So what this practice helps do, Swami showed us, is that it helps separate who is who and what is what. Your Atma Self is saying, I want silence, no sound, to the mind. The mind will go, oh, but no, quiet, but quiet. You will see that your mind wants to jump to From different place places. To place. Whether it's a noise, whether it's your body, your mind will always try to move. Swami says the mind is like a horse. Have you ever watched a horse in the, in the pasture? Everything on the Twitching. horse moves. The ears twitch, the body twitches, the tail moves, everything moves. He said that is the nature of the mind. It'll always try to move. So in order for the mind to be still, we have to discipline it. And that's so we're using the thumb because, because we carry it with us. us. It's easy. It's simple. And what we'd like you to do is just look at it, perceive it, and not think anything. Not your mantra or om, and have your eyes open because it's far more difficult with your eyes or open. Thumb, thumb, thumb. <laughs> yeah, you can't go, or oh, ladies, I need a manicure or something. <laughs> so every time a thought comes, like I wonder if twelve sec quiet, because you want. Just no sound, no thought, no nothing. It's like no different than when you were all children in school and you were looking out the window sort of spacing out and the teacher goes, Shanti! <laughs> what? What? What did I just say? I don't know. That was gone. It's, it's very similar to that. You have no thought. So um, every time a voice comes, Thoughts come, tell it to be quiet. So Janama's going to count the 12 seconds so, so nobody has to think about to. it. 
and you just perceive the thumb. Just With perceive With no it. thought. Okay. And he always likes to make a lot of noise to try to jar the mind into making comments here and there. Okay. Shall we play? Yes? Yes. Okay. Here and we go. Swami said, by doing this, you will gain perfect, perfect. Focus. And discipline of the mind. Okay. And if you practice this for two or three months, really, really do it. Every time you have free 12 seconds and after a while you know you don't have to think about 12 seconds, you just do it. And you try it too, okay? Done. And, and just do it. Okay. So he said within a very short time you have exquisite focus and everything in life will be easier for you to deal and to practice and to be focused with, okay? Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Okay, 12 seconds are up. Did some of you feel like you wanted to hold your breath? You didn't want to breathe? <laughs> Not breathe, go into like a suspended... <gasps> <laughs> that's, that's pretty close. And how many times did you have to say, quiet, shush? Did you see that you were not the mind that wanted to move? Did you see there was see, a part of you that was aware? who is saying quiet to whom? The part of you that was aware that something wanted to move, which was your mind. You wanted to think about a sound or anything, okay? That's the separation we're talking about because that part of you that moves, that isn't you. That is your tool. It's Call something. the mind. It's something that we get when we get the body and the five senses so that we can interact in this creation of name and, and the form. Two, and the, the tool's job, the mind's job, is to keep us so busy, so active, that we don't have even a moment to think of, who am I? What's this all about? What's going on? Where did I come from? Quiet, quiet. Did you see that ring in the window? Go, look at it. You might want it. You know, it's like... It's filled with desires, filled with attachments. And this is where we have to pull back the reins and discipline it. Remember, that's what the Buddha found. He found the empty mind space, which he called nirvana, which was the great emptiness, he, as, as he called it. But what it is, it's the mind that no longer has name or form projected in it, which when you go to that empty mind experience, and we all do, we do it in deep sleep, right? But we don't remember it. But we can do it consciously all the time if we practice this little exercise. And Swami said, all the masters and the gurus, they've all practiced this exercise in one form or another. Because this exercise, he said, is the end result of all the meditations that you do. Ramakrishna. Ramana Maharshi. Ramana Maharshi looked at the star in the sky. In the sky and used it, Swami told us, you know. So all the different ones practice this particular exercise. He says the rest is just concentration to keep the mind focused on one thing, om, so, hum, or something of that nature. And he explained the reason he gave the, the candle meditation, you know, the flame meditation. It's, it does exactly the same thing, get you into the empty mind state. And one, in other words, you look at the candle, right? Your eyes are looking at the candle, you, you're focusing on it, you're looking at the candle, and pretty soon your eyes get tired and they go, oh. <laughs> okay, your eyes get tired, and then as your eyes are closed, you see the flame here, right? And then the flame seems to spread. And if you use your imagination, you can spread it through your whole body, through the whole room, through all of Puddha Party, through the whole world, and through the universe. And if you expand in consciousness or in your imagination that way, you'll come to a point where you will just lose your identification of the self, of the body, and you will actually be the light. But the moment you become the light, there will be no light. You will be it, but it will only be that empty mind awareness, which is what we all are. One time Swami walked in the room. He said, everybody was talking about the Sat, Chit and Ananda. 
right? A couple of students were in a room, we were in a room, and they had been debating the Sat Chit Ananda. So Swami walks in the room and he says, Do you know what you're talking about? Do you know that Sat Chit Ananda? Do you know it? And everybody was quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so then he said, I'll show you. Very easy. Go ahead. No, no, go. Oh. Close your eyes. I'm enjoying this. Okay. <laughs> Close your eyes. Go ahead. Close your eyes. Now open them. What you see? What you see? Darkness, lights, nothing. Swami would say, "Who was seeing?" And one of the students says, "It was the mind, Swami." He said, "Okay. What is the mind? The mind appears like a piece of cloth because of all the thoughts and the desires interwoven, right? So it appears to be something." But he said, were you thinking? Can Any of you have a thought have when thought. John must said, close your eyes? Hmm? Did you have a thought? No. So it wasn't the mind. You were just perceiving something, right? <coughs> Who is the one perceiving is your atmas. That's your That's atma your consciousness. consciousness. And we pay attention to everything out here, but we don't pay attention to that atma consciousness, do we? And when you go to the empty mind experience, you will be in that state that you just had for just a few moments, you can stay in it, and it stretches. Now, let me just give you guys, a, a lot of you already have heard a sharing about God, right? When Swami says, you are God, and then we ask Swami, Swami, God is such a, describe God. And he says, you tell me if you agree with this, okay? All loving? Can we agree with this? Yeah. God would be all loving, right? All inclusive, because there is nothing that is not God. And left out, right? And all powerful. Powerful enough to manifest creation. Right. Mm -hmm. And he looked at us, this is you. This is you. What have you been doing with all your power? All your love. All your inclusiveness. So we said, how can we do this? Why does he say, watch your thoughts, watch your words, watch your actions? Watch your heart. Because we're God. Our thoughts are all powerful. When Swami comes out for darshan, he awakens hearts to the truth. That they are him and he is... All. It's all one. You can do the same, he says. No different. Just believe what I'm telling you. That you are divine. You are beautiful. You are God. Just silence the mind. Take your power back and be Swami. Do what Swami does. So Kalasu shared an invocation that she uses and has been using for many, many years with whatever I'm doing in life. This is my life meditation. This is our life meditation. Janama has his invocation, whatever he uses. But now we've been using it for so long, it's now so part of us. It's just a... It's now a vibration rather than a thought. Let's say I'm at downtown Puda Party and I'm buying a scarf. As I'm giving the guy the rupee, I'll just say the words, but this is the whoever touches these rupees, may their hearts be open to the truth that they are God, have always been God, and may their lives be filled with joy, love, and laughter. And so it is. Boom. Imagine how many people are going to be touching those rubies. Uh, now, if we had side towers and having some food, right? We say, may all of creation come and join us with this beautiful food. love offering of food. And may the energy produced from this food allow each and every one in creation to know that they are the Paramatma consciousness, always and eternally. And may all bellies, bellies be, be full, full as we're eating. eating. And so, so it, it is. is. Infusing your power. <laughs> we can do this. But we forget. Swami says it says it's this simple. All you have to do is remember. remember the mind the will oneness. prevent you. It will fight you and prevent you and make everything else so more important. And separate. All you have if you're eating an ice cream cone. Ah, it's good ice cream. <laughs> oh shoot. Janama, I forgot to share it with all of creation. Oh my goodness, you better eat another one. Okay. <laughs> now this laughter is real spirituality. spirituality. Just playing with it wherever you go. And he says you can do this 24-7 with whatever you're doing. If you're walking down the street, 
on Muddy Pooty Par- Poodle Party Street. Well, it's <laughs> muddy. Whoever walks in this muddy footprint that this body is making, may their hearts be open to the truth that they are God, have always been God, and so it is. Huh, how many people are going to step in that squish? <laughs> <laughs> and their hearts will open. When he says, we are God, what is he saying? Have we listened? Have we truly listened? Embodiments of love. What have we been doing with all of our grace, all of our power? Atma Swarupala. We've been forgetting about it. We're saying, no, you're God, Swami. I'm just your Tila. No, that's that separation. That is the life. Do you think that's Swami's final message? You know, one time uh, we were here and Swami had sent us all over the world sharing the oneness and how to live in it and how to share it with, you know, with Bottom parts. line, we were sharing, it's time to, st- at all the centers, it's guys, it's time to stop the worship and start being Swami. Because worship is separation. Ritual is separation. It's beautiful. They're wonderful stepping stones and they're beautiful. But we have to graduate sometime. So we were here during... Uh, Shivaratri is the day, he, the time that he produced the lingam. He hadn't produced the lingam in a real long time. Remember? Was it 99? Yeah, I think so. So, I don't, I don't know. Usually we try to avoid But he had crowds. called us for Shivaratri. <laughs> and we said, Swami, you uh, okay. know these parts don't like crowds. Anyway, he says, come. We were sitting there and I'm looking at all the rituals, all the indul, and he's indulging them all in the ritual. And I'm like, Oh my God, Swami, why aren't you giving it this? I mean, from the get-go, from day one that we met Swami, he asked me my name. Kalasu, no, you are God, you are Swami, know this now. He said, but, 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 no but. He said, the I am that is the self is the only reality. The inner Swami is the one that's real. The outer Swami, he went like this. He went like this to himself, bubble on the ocean. He went like this to us. Same, bubble on the ocean, not this, real. And he would, no matter how much I wanted, I found God, I want you to take care of me. <laughs> You're my dad, you take care of me. No, you are God, you are Swami. Time and to grow up and be it, right. think it, act it. Live it. So. And he said, right in, in the very yeah. beginning, he said, look, I'm, I'll make it really simple for you. All name, all, all form, form, on any level, any loka, in, vaya in, kunta, indra in, loka, indra anyone, loka. anything, heaven, hell, all illusion, mind created illusion, not real. All name, very simple, all name and form, illusion, illusion. the dream, still. It's a game, it's a play, all right. a play of illusion. So we were there at Shivaratri, and I'm watching everything that was going on, and going, Swami... I mean, we just got back from a big tour, basically telling everybody it's time to stop <laughs> worshipping and time to be you, and look at this. That day he called us in. <laughs> so I was sitting across from this elderly man who was sitting in a chair, elderly Indian man, very old, and he was sitting right next to Swami, and Swami was talking to him in Telugu. Uh, they were talking, talking, and then all of a sudden he got off his chair and... No, he had a thought. Oh, yeah. I'm sitting there across from this as they were talking, and I'm thinking, Swami, you're having us travel all over, basically sharing what you shared with us, taught us. Made this body walk through, back to learn within myself that it's time to stop worshiping and be you. Is it okay? And as I was thinking, is it okay? Are we doing something wrong? Are we doing something wrong? The Indian man got off his seat and grabbed hold of Swami's feet and said, I am your greatest devotee. My life has been only of worship of you, Swami. Swami picked him up from the shoulders, hit his chest, said, no, no, no. Worship duality. Worship life. You are God. You are Swami. Know this now. You don't have any time. I'm sitting back (laughs) going, thank you. (laughs) And then he looked over at me like, is that good enough? (laughs) I was like, thank you. In the beginning, we did bhajans. That means repetitious song. You all know what a bhajan is. But then Swami asked us to do songs of the Brahma Vidya. Here is one of them. 
consciousness is and that is all all that can ever be it's always been forever is the core of Sing it with us, please. I am, that is the truth of me. One more time. I am, that is the truth of me. I am, Atma, eternally. Nothing exists, just consciousness. All else is relative. I am right now, that's what there is. Being is perfect bliss. One more song. Then. Which one? Okay. Here's another one of those songs. <clears throat> Ask yourself, who am I? Then listen inwardly. Your ego voice will answer you. Tis I, yourself, it's me. Now ask, where do I come from? What is my primal source? All things arise somehow, somewhere. So what is my root cause? Where do we find the answer to our reality? I know it's time for all to look deep inside and see. Soon there might be no answer, no images you might see. Your mind is turning inward now to seek its reality. The mind is like a piece of cloth woven by constant thought. Unravel it and what is left? Can you see the lie that we bought? Where do we find the answer to our reality? I know it's time for all to look deep inside and see. Dissolve the mind by asking, Who is this I, this me? What is my true origin, the source? 
reality But if thoughts keep interrupting Your inner quest and space Ask them for whom they rise up now For whom they show their face Where do we find the answer To our reality I know it's time For all to look Deep inside and see Once more ego might answer For me you fool The I So just repeat The question friend Who is this me This I Soon there will be no answer Silence will permeate Your thoughts are interrupted now By that clear, peaceful state Here we will find the answer To our reality I know it's time For all to look deep inside and see If we remain within this silent awareness state My tendencies will die out soon And egos descend to great This silent state of being Is like an endless sky Abide within this silent bliss And know your eternal eye Yes We have found the answer To our reality I know it's time For all to look Deep inside and see Now let go of all of your attachments Know that all desires are just a lie Because the mind is truly non-existent, friend Because we simply are Sat, Chit, Ananda Pure awareness eternally Divine love We are bliss We are the eternal I. Sing it with us. We are the eternal I. We are love, we are truth, we are bliss, we are God. Forever and forever we are one. We are. Because if we're short of time, yes. let's let the Gregory, okay. Shanti. One do a song, and then Shanti, and we do another German song, so we have a little world education here. Come on, <laughs> let's get off this thing. Do you remember the words? Probably not, but let's try. <laughs> <laughs> I already don't know. Okay, we're gonna do a Johnny Cash song, then we're gonna do a Smokey Robinson song. <laughs>
hope I'm hoping it will shut your mouth First-class ticket on a luxury line of cruise. I got out in the ocean, looked around, and there was you. <laughs> you big <laughs> bad woman. You long-legged guitar picking man. Well, we can work this out. Oh, yes, we can. Got you a first class ticket. Oh yeah, okay. I got you a limousine. Oh, but I don't want no car. I gave my love and everything, but you're still what you are. You're just a big mouth. <laughs> no wait. Yeah, that's it. I'm a big mouth man. No. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs>
one. <laughs> now what? What time is it? <coughs> oh, we have time. We have time. Yeah. Yes, they lock those doors. Here's another. Here's another one of those songs we were in the room one time. Come on, up, up you go. Been on my ear floor too long. <laughs> okay. Uh, this was back in the very early days, and some of the students used to run into Katagori to listen to the movies. You know? Oh, yeah. They actually snuck into Katagori. That's when it was the little village. I'm sure you remember that. There's nothing but farmland, farmland back there. there. And we could, where, where we were staying, we could hear the movie house doing Blaring the music. all night long. And the students during, you know, exams would sneak out. Sneak out to go watch the Swami movies. Thinking Swami wouldn't know. <laughs> Yeah. So one day, uh, Swami accosted them and said, "You've been, you've been. Uh, your grades on your finals were not very good. I know what you were doing. You were sneaking out to the theater." So they were like, "Yeah, Swami." So, so he said, "Why? Why don't you watch this movie that's this going on best, called Life?" Best movie. And then he explained how creation is like a movie screen and like a movie scene. So that's where the song came from. This came, came from. from that talk. We were in the room and he was scolding the students for their poor grades. <laughs> Creation's like a movie scene Reflected on a big white screen The screen is called God's spirit love The one creation's made up of And, and our, our life is the story scene Superimposed upon the screen Stop projecting form and name And then tell me what can be seen Only the empty big white screen Involved and blind, and they forget it's all a dream, just like old movies we have seen. It's funny how we laugh and cry, involved with pictures rolling by. Not I am. They cannot change or harm the screen And if we took the screen away No movies could be seen today So meditate upon the screen For that's what's called the great unseen such. 
Chitan Ananda, pure awareness of self. And that's how the song went. No, 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 no. no. no, no. Take all that beautiful energy, put inside, it inside. Inside, inside. <laughs> Here is one of the earlier bhajans. Oh, you probably... the love song to Swan. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was another. That. This time, all right, I'm just going to do the yeah. Padamaskar thing. Yeah. All right, we were uh, at, it was, we were in Whitefield. And he said, big concert tomorrow. He had all the students. It was one of the new auditoriums that, was, that were built. So that day, they set up the microphones. Was it Bhagavantam called us on? Swami was sitting on stage already. and Somebody in, introduced us. And we came up and sat in front of our mics. Swami was still standing. Like, I, we're sitting like we are right now with the mics here. And Swami was standing. I'm looking over at Swami. He's looking down at me, and big audience. And under his breath, he's going, Pad Namaskar. And I know what Pad Namaskar is, but empty mind. <laughs> it's like, I'm, my, I'm going, Pad Namaskar. I know what Pad Namaskar is, but what is it? What is it? And I'm looking over at him, and he's going, Pad, Pad Namaskar. Namaskar. And he's, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> It, my brain was dead. Okay, <laughs> and then he goes like this: <laughs> Pod Namaskar, and lifts up his skirt like his his, his, his roll. Everybody was cracking. Everybody's up. cracking up, and I just sort of flew to his feet. And John Mo went over and flew to his feet, and it was like, and he's like. <laughs> <laughs> and this time, instead of waiting to the end, he sat down, looked over, and he goes. Any, Any new, new song? song before it even started. <laughs> so it was like, okay, so we start off with a, since we're already dead in the brain, it's time to do a good song, a new song. <laughs> and I'll tell you quickly how it happened so you understand. We were in Darshan before, the day before, and uh, I had been following him around with a camera taking pictures. Uh, in those days, he allowed me to do that. So No save it alls back then. <laughs> so... Um, in, the middle of Dar- in the middle of Darshan, he turned around to me and he said, sit down, enjoy Darshan. So I sat down and Darshan was over and as I got up, I heard a very loud voice back here, very loud, saying, Keshava! I went, whoa. <laughs> Didn't know what it meant. I, you know, it was a strange name. But I thought it was some form of endearment for It wasn't God. me. I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so... I thought, hmm, that's nice. And as I was thinking, that's nice. The whole song was playing in my head, words and the music. And normally I would run, try to get a piece of paper and a guitar and put it down, but I didn't. I just enjoyed the flow of the song. So when it came time for the concert in the beginning, he said, any new song? And I I heard the voice again. Keshava! And we understood the meaning. We a- you asked them. You asked one of the students what it meant. Well, I asked what it meant, and he said it means the one that is the Trinity, all three, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. It means the one with the beautiful hair, and the one that, that slew, slew the King. demon Kesa, Kesa, right? So it had three meanings. Anyway, here is the song, and when we got stuck for words, again, he leaned over and filled it. Sheva, your glory is beyond compare. It's budget style, so. Everybody. Keshava, your glory is beyond compare. You're complete and still with all you share. You're complete and still with all you share. Keshava, we share your life of love. Keshava, we share your life of love. And no words could ever say enough. No words could ever say enough. Keshava, 
Your love light blinds the sun Keshava Your love light blinds the sun Forever on me Your will be Merge within your splendor, Sai Baba, we surrender, and the fruits of all life's actions at your feet. Sai Keshava, please guide us straight unto bliss inside us. Your special grace makes us complete. How the song went. So back to being getting, God, being God, <laughs> being Swami, being one. Why is it for us so difficult to conceive this, even just the concept of the oneness? Because everything appears separate to us. Everything appears separate, right? Every single thing in this entire creation is separate to us. To the mind, to the but not really. This is why the the senses have been lying to us. Just like my foot touching this hard floor, my senses say it's hard. It's not Solid. alive. Not real. Not it's here just to serve me. That's an ego, total perception. perception. But I cut off a little. You know, get a hammer, smash it a little bit. Say, ooh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just gonna prove something. Okay. Put it under a high-powered microscope, high, high-powered microscope. Electronic microscope. And it is moving molecules and atoms. So have our senses not lied to us. And it is alive because life is judged by motion, movement. And consciousness. And consciousness. If you 
watch the atoms move around, right? The electrons and the protons, they all have perfect symmetry and they move perfectly, right? So there must be consciousness there. So we are really a sea of molecules and atoms moving, but our senses go, no, 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 this isn't, this isn't alive, but it is. And everything likes to be loved, appreciated, and treated respectfully. And if you magnify it enough, it's nothing. Yes, that's it's empty space. Absolutely. And that's what the scientists are getting to. They're going deeper and deeper. They're going into quarks. They're going into all kinds of different little... Um, so every time your senses say we're separate, say liar, <laughs> liar. This is the little practice. That's all it takes. Just and play with it. When Maya tells you something that you know is not so and not true anymore because you understand the bigger picture. Go to your truth every single time. And if you forget, it's okay. For a hundred thousand lifetimes, we didn't know. Only once in a while an avatar or a saint and sage says, you're God, Wake you're up. me, Wake you're up. divine. Don't let the mind fool you anymore. Wake up. But, but, but I'm only a little part of it. Then. No, no, what's a little part? What's the difference between a drop of, in the, of the ocean and the whole ocean? It's the same water. It's the mind. Swami explained you. one time, think of the ocean being absolutely still, no movement. That is the sat state of Siva, okay? Meaning that is our natural being state. Now the moment there is a movement, which comes from desire, okay? Then there's a movement in the ocean and the first current happens underneath, right? Now the current believes it's separate from the still ocean. Now, I'm going my way, you go your way. <laughs> and then basically. another current comes, they come together and waves happen, right? Mm -hmm. Now the wave thinks it's different than the current I'm and a bubble. the water. I'm a right? wave. And then the bubble comes on top of the ocean, they think they're separate completely, and then drops of the ocean water jump up and they think they're totally separate. This is no different. And he said, but what is it all? The Just ocean. water. Just water. So what's the difference between one and the other? It's the movement, the experience of that movement. So when Swami comes out for darshan tomorrow, when, if he does or not... <laughs> He'll keep us guessing. He's, he comes out astrally or... Huh? He comes out, he's always out, absolutely. But all I was saying is, when you look at him, him, her, <laughs> look at yourself, see yourself. There's no difference. There truly isn't. Don't let the mind deceive you and make your heart go, oh, no, 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 no. No. Because when he looks at us, he sees only himself. Who needs to go back to the ashram? It's quarter to nine. Anybody who has to go inside the gates, please grab a they rickshaw lock and the door. <laughs> head back. We have no charu here today to take us in. <laughs> <laughs> Is everyone outside? Saying outside? Outsiders. Outside. Yay! Oh. Power to the people! <laughs> Do we have any questions about this oneness business? Because, you know, we've all heard this stuff a hundred times, a thousand times. Look at what Swami tells us. He gives us four little statements. Love all, serve all, help, help ever, ever, hurt never. Nothing. Have we investigated the statements? The answer, most of us, is no. We just take the statement and say they feel very nice, very happy. But if you truly look at the statement, look at the very first one, love all. Uh-oh. Who can do this? Love all. No ego, no mind, no personality can. Shanti can. <laughs> Sh Krishna can. Krishna can. <laughs> all the loving is in the back. Okay, get it. But... The only one that can love all is your Atma, your understanding of the oneness, that everything is you, everything is God, everything is one. If you are in that awareness of it, then you can love that God in all. But we're not at, when Swami says love all, he's not saying love the ego, love the mind, love the emotions. Do or we what? love our own ego? No. Do I love his ego? No. Do Does he have, love this emotional body? No. Do but, you have to love what comes from people in thought, in word, or in deed? No. Yes. No. You, you don't have to love all. You have to love all. all. Yes. If someone's swearing and cursing and booing it, you have to love it. Yeah. You you love the person. You don't have to love the words. The words are also part of the all. Yes, they it. are part well, of the all. Well, you know all, what? 
I disagree with you because that's part of the illusion. Because when I look at you, all I see is the Atma, which is not the I, dream. I love your disagreement. The words, <laughs> the words, the body, the mind, that truly does not exist. So it's like you have to sort of bypass, weed through the Maya and perceive only the divinity. You should love the Maya too, sir. Yes. This is how we you can... created Maya. But Swami told me diligently, Maya, the mind, is a tool. My very first interview with Swami, I was like, the body was, I was 20, 20 some odd years old, body was shaking. I didn't realize there was so much love that swam. I, I didn't know somebody could walk this plane with so much love. He took my hands, looked into my eyes, and I was just happy I finally found him. And he said to me, what took you so long to find me? Tears, nonstop. And then he said, what took you so long to find you? And he went like this. For hundreds of thousands of lifetimes, you've been listening to the wrong voice. And he went like this. The mind will only tell you that you are not beautiful, you are not divine, that you're not Swami. I was, the body was shaking, rattling out of itself so much, and tears were nonstop. And he goes, don't listen to the mind anymore. I'm here to tell you that you are beautiful. You are divine. You are Swami. You've always been. From that moment, I grabbed my flaming sword <laughs> and swore to the mind if he would open up his mouth one more time. All I could think of for was when he ushered me out, I was just a, just a, anyway. Uh, but let's get back to Wait, wait, question. wait, wait. All I could think of was for hundreds of thousands of lifetimes, we listened to this mind. We might have fed it, lied for it, cheated for it, stole for it, killed for it. And all it told us is that we were less than to hold on to its control. It's all in the mind. And he said to me, it's all and only been a tool that we created to entertain us. Now go back to, to what Put you said. Put the tool in its place. It's a horrible master. It's you, a tool. Yeah. It's right. a tool and only. I love the way it entertains me. And, too. and you're, you're absolutely correct. When s whatever happens is God. The words are God, the feelings are God, the energies are God. Yes, absolutely correct. Here is the difference. You don't. When we say the word loving, okay, it has a different connotation to us. Change that word to acceptance. If somebody yells at you, screams at you, swears at you, you just accept it for what it is. You understand that it is they're all their part of the game and they're having their experiences and you allow it. That is love. It so might have been one of your lifetimes that you cursed and swore and did all those things and now you know it's, you don't like it so you maybe you don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Many of our lifetimes. But so... This <laughs> Let's put it into perspective because Swami walked in the room one time again. He said, what is humility and what is unconditional love? They're pretty much the same. So he walked in and everybody gave different answers, right? And then he said, no, I will tell. He said, humility and unconditional love is this. When you no longer need to add, add or, subtract. or subtract anything from anything. That is unconditional love. That is pure humility. That's it. And that's what we said. You accept what is because it is, and you don't need to change it. Now, again, there are different circumstances. Like if you go to um, the Bhagavad Gita, when Krishna and um, and um, you did no no Krishna and Arjuna were in the middle of the battlefield. And Arjuna. Ar Arjuna said, 
No, I won't fight. I won't kill my grandsire. I won't kill my cousins. I'd rather go to live in the forest. And Krishna said, Ah, now you're ready to learn the highest truth. Because he was, he was willing not to use violence in order to get something that he dharmically felt should have been his, which means the kingdom, okay? Because everything had been, you all know the story, so we don't have to talk about it, but what Krishna was telling him is, now that I can teach you the highest truth, and the highest truth is, there is no you doing anything. You are my instrument. You worked for 80 some odd years to be the greatest archer in the world. Now you're gonna run away into the forest when I need you to be my instrument? And then he showed him the omnipresence and he showed him look you can't kill anything you're the immortal soul all of them are the immortal it's all soul my play. it's all my play my game they created karma and this game has the rule of karma every action has a reaction okay so they've created their own karma now they have to pay it they're walking into the mouth of death he showed him time as the mouth of death right a flaming mouth so then Arjuna still had all these doubts coming up and Krishna talked to him again and again until Krishna said, listen, you have to take your sword of wisdom, you have to take your sword of truth you and you slay every, every doubt. doubt that comes to your mind. As long as a doubt comes up, you will not be able to stay in your dharma. <clears throat> and then of course, Arjuna, after a while, he got it, he understood, he stood up, he twanged his bow and he said, let's fight, let's go play, okay? But, but then still, during the battle, he, when he had, he wasn't really... Facing Bhishma, right? His weapon wasn't really pulled tight enough to really... Do any damage, you know? That's so when Krishna jumped off the chariot and said, if you're not going to do it, I'll, I'll do it. it. He said, no, 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 I'll, I'll get back on. <laughs> so <laughs> even... Even after seeing everything, being with Krishna, all so the time. you know, so we're all so, doing pretty good. <laughs> we're not doing badly at all, are we? <laughs> Do we have any questions about this stuff? Anything? We're well, all me share with you what we've walked through and what Swami shared with us. We're only telling you personal experiences, nothing else. Okay, let's do another song. Yes. Uh, so also when we have to go. Through karma, then, uh, yeah. Body goes through karma. Your atma is perfect. This is what Swami said. He he came in the room, mm -hmm. and uh, he uh, he told us once, and we shared with everybody. Nobody's done every any any of us have, have never ever done, anything done anything wrong or bad. Mm -hmm. All we've had is learning experiences, mm -hmm. maybe painful, maybe pleasurable, but if we had known better before we did something that wasn't so nice, would we have done it? No. So therefore, somehow we needed or designed this learning experience. Then, for that experience, because we felt ourselves separate, as a separate entity, we will then have the repercussion for that. And that is our karma. So when karma comes, why do we cry about it? Because we created an action at some point somewhere in time and space now it's coming back if we understand the law of karma we'll say ah oh, there are no victims there are no accidents there are no coincidences so yeah, we can isn't the ego the only one that's crying it's the ego crying it's yes oh yeah absolutely yeah. the emotion the ego the personality we always <laughs> tend to forget karma when it deals with us personally how convenient we look outside and say ah oh, that's karma but when it comes to us Oh, Swami, why did you have this pain? I, uh, oh, what for? I, I was good. I didn't do anything. We do that, don't we? Right. So when we do so our own karma, when we realize the self life... You live in your God state, and that would be nishkarma karma, because you are no longer expecting any return. That's one thing. No matter what, or, what action you do... Or flows through you. You are not... The doer, the ego consciousness is not doing it. You are just being the vehicle. Which is what Krishna again showed in the Bhagavad Gita. He said, Nishkarma karma, the simple way it is surrender everything to me, every thought, every word, every deed, everything. Know that I'm the charioteer mm -hmm. and I will guide you through this, you know, the sea of samsara. And but it comes with the responsibility of being, thinking, Empty. speaking, acting as your God state. If you give 
Samantha, a beautiful golden sari. You know, and because you like her and you wanted to give it to her, and she sees somebody who really, really desires it and loves it more than because she has no desires left in her body, and she goes, oh. And she turns around and hands it over to this lady. You cannot go, but no, that was, that's for you. You know, then, I want, no. It, then it was an ego action you wanted you a wanted result. You wanted a result. You wanted, you had an attachment. So whatever we do in life, if we can do it without looking for a result to it, it is and just allowing the moment divine state. to interact with the experience? With no expectation. Of anything. Only an ego will expect something in return. That's why the Vedas say, if you are on this path, never, ever accept a gift from anyone. Why? Because unless you're on this path, if somebody offers you a gift, they want something in return. Even a smile, even a thank you, even something. Now, you can, like, if anybody wants to give anything to these bodies, forget it. Unless it's just love. love loving love. Love, and love then, to love. And if we turn around and hand it to somebody else, they can't have any, if they do, here, take it back. And Swami showed it to us physically in the early days when oh, the yeah. first albums came out and we gave it to the trust and the trust put them out, right? All over It was on India. Polydor. Polydor Records. Polydor so, Records. So we said, Swami? We'd like the monies to go to the side Building trust. colleges, goes, you know, and building schools or whatever you want to do goes, with no, it. No, 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 you, you keep, know. you keep. When you come to India, you use the money, you keep it. We said, no, no, no Swami, sorry. it's just love, loving love, love. He said, love? Love to love? Said, yes, love to love. We okay. need nothing. He says, okay, I take. I take. <laughs> but he would only accept it with that. Only as love. He, wouldn't, he would never accept anything else. And we've all known this. All he wants is the love, sharing it. And when we look at him and we love him, he's just reflecting what we are back to us perfectly. He says, I'm reflecting your own love back to you. And the reason why you recognize it in Swami is because the love in you is blooming it's opening up how many people have you known that come have seen Swami and go hmm interesting and walk away but their lives will never be the, the same. same regardless <laughs> okay let's all sing a song together guys okay I am God I am God I am not different from God I am God I am not different from Sai. I am Sai, such a Sai. I am not different from Sai. I am Sai, such a Sai. I am not different from Sai. I am Sai, such a Sai. I am not different from Sai. I am love, divine love. I am not different from love. I am love, divine love. I am not different from love. I am love, divine love. I am not different from love. I am love, divine love. I am not I am one, all are one. one. I am not different from one. I am one, always one. I am not different from one. I am one, always one. I am not different from one. I am one, always one. I am not different from one. I am all. 
I am all. I am not different from all. I am all. Always I am all. all. <laughs> I am not different from all. I am all. Always all. I am not different from all. I am all. I am you, you are me. We are not different from me. I am you, you are me. I am not different from me. I am you, you are me. I am not different from me. I am you. Always I. I am not different, different from I. I am I. I I I. I am not different from I. I am I. I I I. I am not different from I. I am I. I I I. I am not different from I. I am God. I am God. I am not different from God. I am God. I am God. I am not different from God. I am God. I am God. I am not different from God. I am God. I am God. I am not different. Self, divine, divine self. self. I am not different from self. I am self, divine self. I am not different from self. I am self, divine self. All loving, all inclusive, and all powerful. I am not different from self. I am self. Divine self, I am not different from self. Don't let the mind tell you different. Every time it does, just kick it in the toolbox. <laughs> Swami told us once. He said, "Love will always tell you that you're everything because you're connected to all, and wisdom will always tell you." You are, you are nothing. No particular you are no thing. thing beyond name and form. So wisdom will always tell us we are, are beyond no name and form. Thing. We are nothing, no thing. Because you're not a separate little thing. And love will always tell us we are everything because we are always eternally connected. connected. Sai Ram Swamis, thank you for sharing your love and light. What do you mean? There's pizza. There's pizza goodies. Party, yeah. All right. <laughs> Did we tell you today how beautiful you all are and how much we love you? Well, we just told you. Be always happy, happy, happy. <laughs>